This is an SM Media production. Hi folks and welcome to the latest episode of the SM Media Scottish Women's Football Show. I'm Scott McPike, it is a pleasure to be your host as always and I'm delighted to welcome our new permanent co-host. It's a pleasure to welcome as always on the show, Suzanne Mulvey. Thanks Scott, nice to be on again. Always a pleasure, it's good to good to get you on and obviously you're going to be on a, uh, a lot more often going forward. It's It's been a fascinating few months, we haven't done a, a show since the, the season preview, it's been kind of quite hard to get a show going between the both of us but... It's been, as always, fairly fascinating. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, a lot been happening so far at kind of both ends of the table, SWPL1 and obviously SWPL2 is looking quite exciting as well. Definitely. Uh, it's it's obviously been a, a really fascinating time. We've obviously the Nations League kind of happening as well, but the league has, has been full flow. We probably picked a, a really good week to get the show going because... I don't know if that's it. I've I've heard a lot of people talk about this over the past couple of days. We're recording this. Rangers have beat Glasgow City. Glasgow City are ten points behind. I know they've got a game in hand tomorrow, but it's looking very light. Rangers and Celtic are kind of out on their own at the moment at the top. Yeah, I think it's probably something that people have been predicting for a while. Um, but this is kind of the the most obvious time where you can see the difference. Obviously, Glasgow City, you know, winning the league last year on the on the last day of the season, they done absolutely fantastic. But I think now you are possibly seeing what the actual investment and the you know the the whole team being full time. I think you're seeing now what it can actually do and where it gets you kind of in terms of league position, definitely. Yeah, obviously, we'll we'll kind of touch on the game at the weekend, the, the kind of big game, Glasgow City now Rangers two. Real hard they were a double. I text you right after the game to say is Real hard the best player in the league. I thought she was unplayable in Saturday and Sunday. Like just she's got like she's obviously came from a really good level when I want to kind of touch on Joe Potter and things and just what she's brought to the Rangers side, but real hard to come in. She just looks to be so much like an intelligence advantage to the other players. Like I it's it's something you see a lot in, in football, but it's very I thought it was very noticeable on Sunday just how a yard quicker she is than everybody else. She's just ahead of the ahead of the play, which I just think is when you've got a player like that, you really can't stop them. Yeah, and that, that's, you know, when you when you message me about her straight away, I message back saying she just seems to have a bit of everything in her game and that's what, you know, she's she's fast, she's powerful, she's strong, she can run in behind, you know, she has literally got a bit of everything in her game. She's a good finisher, um, intelligent, like you said. Um, and, and I think she was the massive difference, obviously, getting the, the two goals um, on Sunday. I think she was the, the difference between the two. Um, whether or not if you take her out of the Rangers team would it have still been the, the same scoreline you think the depth of their squad they probably still would have been the, the better team um, I think what was disappointing probably from Glasgow City's point of view is just the lack of chances that they created you know they've, they've got Lord Davison who's been banging in the goals you know for, for seasons for them um, and she's just not getting the chances that, that she did before um, and then again at set pieces they've always been a threat you know Jenna Clark always scored quite a few goals so I think they're missing her at the back a little bit um, but they just they they don't quite seem the the city that they have been before. But you know I know Leanne Ross very well, and and there's no way that you know she'll say that that it's over at all. You know she'll just grind down and go. You know what's mo- more important is as staying together as a team, sticking together, trying to work forward as a team, trying to progress, um, and trying to grind out results until it's obviously mathematically impossible for us not to catch um, Rangers and Celtic. Joe Potter said in her post her post match reaction, she she held, held the performance. She said obviously that that she asked the players to start strong. We knew it was going to be a tough game, and we had an excellent week of training that showed in the game today. And what, what have you kind of made of her so far? And like as when you look on paper, it is mostly the same squad. There's been a couple that obviously real hard to come in. And there's a couple other players that have come in, but she has obviously come in and, and done and changed something. What what do you think? Have you been impressed with how she's kind of come in and adapted to this this Rangers side? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Sometimes when, when a manager comes in, it can take a, a, a while to gel. But I think that it was the, the perfect timing in terms of the Rangers did need to kind of change. They were going through a bit of a, a transition themselves. So they needed something new. They needed something fresh. And, and Joe Potter's been exactly what they needed. I think 
for me, you know, whenever I watch the games, I think what's most notable is how vocal she is at the side. Mm -hmm. You know, when the, the camera's behind her, you can literally hear her instructing all the players. You get some managers that'll just sit on the bench and, you know, maybe pass on a wee message here and there, whereas she talks the players through it. And I think that's probably because she's played at such a high level herself. And, you know, she was such a an influential, experienced player on the park, very vocal. So I think she's brought that, you know, into our, our management style, which really is working well for Rangers. Yeah, absolutely. Just a, a kind of word on Glasgow City. Like they, they obviously have the have something the other sides don't have, which is a, a tremendous ability to win in the past, and they've they've got the history that, that no other club has. But do you worry for them in that position, or do you think there is still a small glimmer of hope that we can claw that back? It is a big gap when you look at it, but they are they they do have the kind of battle hardened mentality that not many other sides have. Yeah, I mean, even on, on Sunday, even when it was 1-0, you still thought, you know, they could still maybe sneak a goal here. You know, they still have got the players within their squad, the squad you know, Hayley Lauder, uh, Maddie Full and Lauren Davidson. They've got all the players that can nick a goal, that can create something. They're just not really doing it at the moment. It might be that, you know, one game it just clicks for them and then they start going on a good run. Um, but it's just unfortunate at the moment that, that they've not had the results that, you know, we would expect them. And, it, and I think disappointing as well, the nil nil draw with Hearts as well. I think it's it's things like, you normally just see um, teams like Rangers, Celtic, Glasgow City dropping points against each other. Yeah. So when they start dropping points against other teams around them, that's when you start thinking, look, you know, it could be a, a bit of a kind of transition here for them. And it could be, obviously people are, you know, I've seen things online talking about a downward spiral. They're still Glasgow City. They've still got massive, you know, fan base. They've still got... It's such a great kind of team behind the scenes. So I think that they'll be absolutely fine. It's just a, a transition period for them where, you know, they need to figure out what's next for them. And I, I'm sure they will, you know, still be around the, the top, definitely. Yeah, Celtic have obviously been very impressive as well. They, again, just keep scoring goals despite, again, every season seem to lose their, their highest kind of goal-scoring <laughs> thread, but they still manage to do it. But they're a side that have just, they're so consistent. I mean, they've only lost one game to Rangers and it was... It was probably one of those games that both sides will feel that they deserve to win. It was, I thought, it was a, a really interesting contest. But Celtic just they, they always seem to have like the Amy Gallagher has been terrific. They've got, obviously got uh, Caitlin Hayes, Chloe Craig, Chloe Craig are scoring goals on a weekly basis. Like they've they've got a lot of goals in their side, and they, I mean they just they aren't for stopping. Like they've been so consistent. They're only the only blemish in their record is obviously their their defeat against Rangers. Yeah, I, I thought even, you know, watching that game, I thought when, when they took the lead, I thought, oh, that, you know, that's it, they're going to go on and maybe build on that. But give um, Rangers their the due, they came right back into it and, and pulled, you know, a couple of great goals um, and managed to get the three points. But I think that, that for Celtic, I think that for me, it seems like they're just kind of going about their business a wee bit quieter behind the scenes. You know, you're hearing about Rangers beating Glasgow City and Rangers, you know, with, with these great results. But but Celtic are still grinding out the results um, that they need apart from that one against Rangers. And, you know, when they've got players like Laverski, Gallagher, um, you know, Kavanagh has been really well for them at the yeah. moment as well. And like he says, Hayes, you know, when you've got defenders like Hayes and Chloe Craig constantly scoring goals for you, then, you know, obviously, sometimes you just need that to nick your, you know, a wee goal if your, your strikers are now in form. But they're still scoring lots of goals. And, you know, I don't think they'll have a problem with, with keep grinding out the results. It just will go to the head-to-heads -head against them and Rangers. Yeah, and that, that game in the, the 5th October against Glasgow City, they, they played them at home. And it was one of those games, like if, if you remember, it was there was nothing really happened first half. Obviously, Kenzie Wigg sent off for Glasgow City. Uh, Chloe Craig gave them the lead, but Colette Kavanagh scored in a late a last minute goal to give them a few points. And it is just those fine margins that have put Celtic that there's, there is the gap that big. Glasgow City probably would have been delighted to go home losing a player that day and getting home with a draw, but just that those fine margins, that late goal, and it's just it shows you just a massive game like that can just make all the difference. That was a massive win, I thought, for Celtic that day. Yeah, definitely. You know, obviously getting the three points is absolutely huge, but I think just the, the actual psychological advantage it, it gives you over one of your, your big rivals, you know, getting a last minute winner. Um, and I think that's what we've seen over the years with Celtic. You can never kind of write them off. Last season they had quite a few you know, last minute goals that you thought, oh, wait a minute, this could lead them to winning the title after getting all these results. And they just, you know, they were just pipped um, by, by Glasgow City. But I think that that them, you know, that that is just Celtic now. You see that. And I think it's from the passion from Fran, you know, that's right into the players. And 
And again, I always talk about the, the core of players that Celtic manage to keep every year. You know, you've got your Kelly Clark, Caitlin Hayes, Chloe Craig, um, you know, like I said, Kavna coming back into the squad. And then you've also got Gallagher, who maybe had a quieter season last season, but she's absolutely, you know, firing on all cylinders this season. She's doing, doing brilliant. And um, there's a few other, you know, kind of players as well that are starting to do well. Um, Nats Ross as well, she's banging the, yeah, you know, the goal as yeah. well. So, yeah, I, I think that there's just so many players um, that they can rely on for goals, you know, that, that similar to Rangers, you know, they've got lots of goals in their side. Um, that whenever, you know, a couple of players are they are they performing, you always get that one or two players that will just step up to the plate. They've got big time players. Yeah, absolutely. Probably the surprise package of the uh, surprise package of the league so far this season has been part of Thistle. They're in a really good position so far. Twenty four points with thirteen games. I think they're the, I think they've won the last three. Is that right? I I think the the one against part the one away to Aberdeen beat Hamilton and then a big result, a one 0 one away to the United as well. They've just been a, a total really it's, good they've been phenomenal so far I, I think it's a surprise package for most people but because I had been in and around them before mm-hmm. and I know Brian Graham quite well and you know I've spoke to him quite recently and, and you can just see his his passion and his drive like he wants he, at the moment he's trying to set up that that they're a, a professional club that they're you know part time or full time or however you want to word it without the financial backing so you know they go in they try and be as professional as possible the mentality is they all work for each other, you know, they grind out results. Um, and I think that's just shown the way they play, you know, and, and they like Brian and they admire him, they respect him and they, they can see what his vision is and they all want to, you know, work towards that and, and try and get there. Um, so it is a surprise to most, but but to myself, I think that, that it's where they deserve to be because, you know, the hard work, I think, from, you know, a couple of seasons when he's been trying to go somewhere, I think it's just finally there for him. I think it's clicked for him. Yeah, I think they've got a terrific kind of spine as well. Rachel Donaldson's obviously a player we know well. Cara Henderson, they've got a lot of really Demi Faulkner. They've got they've got players there and they've been players who've been around a long time together. And it's that, when you say when you've got players that have been together for that amount of time, it is only a matter of time before they find a real spark. And that seems to be the season they're doing it. You just hope they maintain it. Yeah, no, definitely. Obviously, a, a big game, you know, this weekend for them. But uh, as well, you know, they, they do just seem to be grinding out the results. You know, there was there was a game through, you know, at Hibs where you didn't think they were going to get the result. And then they managed to get, you know, Lucy Sinclair came on, scored a couple of late goals. And I think that's where maybe the difference has been. Um, you know, they've maybe not got the results they, they deserved before. Whereas now they are, you know, they're starting to pick up the points. They're starting to really get the results that they deserve because of the performances they're putting out. And obviously in training as well, you know, I've, I've seen them training as well. They're fantastic girls that work really hard for each other and they're really competitive in training. It's sharp, it's fast and it is now shown on the pitch. They're doing really well. Yeah, absolutely. But obviously this is the, this was the weekend of the, the first Edinburgh Derby of the season. It finished 2-1 to Hibs, a double from uh, Joran Bakum, I think. That's, apologies if that's not how you pronounce her name, but... Again, that that's one. It was always it was a good crowd as well. It kind of came to life in the second half. These are two sides who are kind of going to be around each other. That obviously meant Hibs moved three points clear of Hearts in fifth. But they're two very solid sides. You could see that watching that game. They were. It was again. It was. A, I thought it was a really good performance for the goal scorer to score a double. But that game kind of went either way, and I think both sides will be kind of. That game will be one of those. It was. It was very tight, but it was just the the kind of team with a better goal scorer on the day won the game. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I think that's the, the Hibs team that you want to see. You know you know that they've got it in, in the locker, but you, they just don't produce it every week. They've had so many disappointing results over the past few seasons. They're just not consistent enough. But if they keep performing to that level and that performance, and obviously, you know, with, with the goal score that they've got, um, obviously they can get the results that, and, you know, they deserve to be right at the top end of the table. Um, in terms of hearts, I think what's disappointing for me is that they're, they're conceding too many goals. That's probably the biggest thing. You've seen it from, you know, the games where they, they were kind of, they're, they're behind and they're pulling at level and they're maybe nicking a wee last minute winner or a last minute draw. But it's the fact that they're conceding so many goals. And and for me, I feel it's just down to the personnel. They're, they're changing a lot. You know, they're not keeping that core of players every year. They're, they're making maybe too many changes too quickly. Um, and you need to be so consistent. You need to have kind of the same players that know the setup within the club, that know, you know, the SWPL, that, yep. that are experienced. And I do just think it's lacking that. They've got good players come in, you know, Carla Garasoli that you had mentioned, you know, in the, in the preview at the start yep. of the season. A great young player. She's done well. She's banged in a couple of goals. But the fact that, obviously, she's getting to, you know, know her teammates around her and then there's other players that have came in as well. I mean, 
Catherine McGovern's came in and done a fantastic job scoring goals, but it is, I just feel that there's just that that wee bit where they're not gelling as much as they could do. And hopefully, you know, over over the Christmas break or whatever, they can have a wee break away and, yeah. you know, come together and then you can actually see what they can do in the park. Because cause for me, I feel that they should definitely be, you know, third, fourth, fifth, definitely run a bit there. Um, it's quite disappointing some of the results that they've had. Yeah, they've obviously got the, the kind of coach, uh, Eva's had a lot of <laughs> headlines as well. I've been really impressed with how she's she's kind of, like, her interviews and things like that. I've been really impressed with how she's kind of conducted herself as well. I think she's a really impressive character. Yeah, and I think that that's probably why it's quite a shock to see that they're not, you know, pushing as much as they have been like last season and um, because she's came in and done such a, a great job. But I do feel it's just down to that inconsistency of, of players and, you know, not the same players playing every week and, um, just a wee bit of a reshuffle for them, but as I say, I don't, I don't think they'll have any, any problems or anything. It might just take them a wee bit of time. Similar to when she first came in, you know, it yep. took a while for them to get used to her style, and it's probably just the same new players coming in. But they just need to know exactly what what her plan is going forward, and them being able to implement it on the pitch. Yeah, absolutely. Sitting in, in the kind of towards the kind of bottom six, Aberdeen have been quite impressive. They're in eighteen points for thirteen games, and then kind of from there, like from kind of Motherwell and United and Spartans, there's only five points between them and the. The kind of top ten. Like, what's your kind of thoughts in the the four teams? Any of them kind of jumped out at you so far? Um, Montrose have kind of been impressive, impressive in stages. You know, you've seen the wee glimpses, not so much over a full performance, but more just over. You know, during a game, they'll maybe pop up with a couple of good goals or yeah. or have a good comeback. Um, but I mean, they've got a, a game in hand. If they win that, they could you know leapfrog over Spartans, and then it's kind of worrying. You know, for Spartans as well, you you worry for them and. I think that was the team that you pointed out at the start of the season that you did kind of worry about them a little bit. Um, and you can see that they've just not been picking up the results that they've maybe deserved. They've conceded quite a few, you know, late or last minute goals. Um, and you've heard from, you know, David McCulloch's interviews that she's not happy, you know, that, that maybe there's been an offside that should have been given or something's went against her or just, you know, poor defending right at the end of the game. Um, so, so they're definitely not getting the results that they need to stay out of that, that relegation zone. Um, but in terms of you know the other ones, Dundee United, they they kind of again they're just ones that are going about their business. They're pulling results against teams that they maybe should be, um, but they're not really threatening teams you know well above them. Um, and and Motherwell, I think that they're just a team that that are, are kind of similar to Hibs. You just don't know what you're going to get. Yeah. You know, and it, I feel that's been that way for a couple of seasons. They're a really good team that have got some great players in their squad. Um, but they're just not consistently getting the results that, that you probably think when you see it on paper, you know, they, you know, they should be getting the three points and, and they're just not doing that yet. But they have got, you know, a good coach there um, and obviously some good players. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, it's been a difficult start for Hamilton as well, but it, it is going to be tough for Hamilton. We did, we did kind of think that at the start of the season and obviously we know Bobby quite well. Uh, they've just it's it's just been it's been tough for them and not, like, it is difficult when you're coming up against sides. Like, they obviously played Celtic. And, and Sunday and you could there was a massive call from class and it, it is going to be difficult for them. Yeah, um, you know, it's for for Bobby and you know it's not disrespectful to say this, he'd just probably be hoping to not finish bottom so that there's yeah. no automatic relegation that there's Definitely. maybe a chance in the playoff that you know they can stay in the league like they did last year. Um and I mean it is still mathematically possible of course but and, and that's for him. He just needs to try and you know keep working um try and keep improving the players that he's got and and I think for him, recruitment was a bit hard as well. You know, the, the players that they brought in, they maybe only, you know, a, a couple came from SWPL2 or, you know, younger players with not a lot of experience. And I think that's kind of showed for them. They've not got a hell of a lot of experience in their squad. Um, and when it comes to playing against, you know, the top teams, then they, they definitely will struggle, which is a shame to see them. You know, you do want them to, to do well. Um, so you, but we'll see, you know, you never know. They could they could get a couple of good results and and climb a wee bit further up the table. Yeah, and that is all it takes. It could just be one like one big one like when they're not expecting it could just spark them into life and that that's something we, uh, that hopefully will happen. Moving on to SWPL two, I think we have to we have to look at the top of the table and say Queen's Park are a phenomenal start. Won nine out of ten games. They've only one defeat. They've been so impressive. They won five nil the week uh, the weekend as well. I think you have to look at Ellie Kane and say that I think she's won three player of the month awards so far. She's probably been the I will easily been the standout player in that league and some start for Queen's Park. Yeah, no, definitely. They've been brilliant. Um but just for, for me, you know, five points clear, it doesn't seem like such a big gap, but in the SWPL two, it's that competitive and that tight that that is a big gap, you know. Yeah. Um definitely. I feel that they're they're definitely strong runners for the league at the moment. I, I can't see by them um, 
you know, when it when it comes to head to head against them and come on it, you still see them pipping come on it. Um, but you know, come on it are doing amazing as well. They're sitting nicely in second, and and I think that for me, it probably will be them two that that do. Um, well, obviously one of them automatic qualifying, the other one going to playoffs. I can't see any other teams, you know, just kind of um, managing to pull off the results, especially against the two. Yeah, and it's been one of those. Obviously, like speaking to Craig kind of last season and a wee bit this season. He's he's always had the confidence that they would come to they would come to the boil like this. Like they've, they've got a lot of attacking talent, but the confidence has always been there that they would get that get to this stage. Yeah, and that's sometimes it just does take time, you know, for the players to jail or to understand exactly what the, the manager wants to do. Um, and you know, a manager with with creative experience, you know that it, it wouldn't take he he knows the league, he knows exactly how to win it. You know, he, he's seen so much. That he's just obviously took a wee bit longer than what he probably wanted himself to implement it, but but you can definitely see now that, that they're heading in the right direction. They're looking really good for that. Yeah, for that absolutely. Are. Uh, Coman looks sat in second. They're on twenty two points. Livingston in uh, nineteen. Bottom, you're seventeen. The top four look kind of there's that there looks to be a big gap. Coman at Livingston, Bottom, you are. Who out of the three of them could you say would be the the kind of biggest threat to Queen's Park? Um. Possibly Borough Muir, just for the kind of experience that they've been in the league a bit longer. Um, Livingston have done absolutely fantastic. They've done really, really well. But as I say, sometimes you just need that wee bit of experience in knowing the league and knowing how to grind out results. Um, but as I say, I can't see by the top two. You know, they, they kind of will maybe push them the most, but I do feel that they too will finish in top two spots. Yeah, and there's uh, still in uni, they've had, had a good start, 11 points for 10 games. St Johnson and Glasgow women, nine points so far. But the, the team down the bottom, I don't think a lot of people saw this coming. And I want to kind of get your thoughts on it. I think I, Gart Cairn, it's a very difficult one to assess because we don't know what's what's going on. But you look at their side, it's a completely different side to it was last season. And they're picked, I mean, they've only got one point for 10 games. There's, there's something obviously amiss there. Yeah, um for me, like you said, the, the personnel, you know, quite a quite a few of the players, I, I think a few went to Hamilton, you know, and, and I think that that when you're losing, you know, two or three of your kind of best players or the players that have performed well over the, the previous season for you, I think when you're losing them at the same time, it's really, really hard. And and we know, you know, from previous years, SNPL2 is so competitive that that it's, you know, that there can be, you know, five, six points between four or five teams. So, you know, that, that can make the difference. And Every single game, when you see that, there's never, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nil games. Mm -hmm. They're all so tight that anybody can win any game in that league, always. Um, and I think that's why Dark Cairn are struggling a little bit. They just lost too many players at the same time. And and I think probably a big blow for them was losing the playoff game. That, you know, yeah. knocked the stuffing out of them a, a bit. And, you know, maybe a couple of players have left. And it's just kind of affected them overall that, that maybe they thought that they were going to get promoted and then, you know, to, to kind of lose in that way right at the end of the season, I think it has kind of affected them a little bit. Um, but like you says, I don't think a lot of people did predict that. I think I says I was, you know, thinking they were going to be one of the top ones because they'd done so well last season. Um, but it just shows you in that league, you know, Livingston have just came up and they're near the top, whereas Gartier were in the playoffs and now they're right at the bottom. It does show you that, that I think that is, you know, in all the leagues in Scotland, that's probably one of the most competitive in terms of, it's so hard to pick a winner at the start of the season because there's you know four or five that, that could actually take the title. Yeah, exactly. And and like Queen's Park, obviously, I think they scored last minute against St Johnson last week to get a big three points as well. And it just shows you like it can be one of those like every game's gonna to be tough in this in this division. But you mentioned there about obviously Gart Cairn kind of maybe kind of struggling to kind of come off that result in the, the playoff fight. It was against Hamilton to get into the top flight. An our team who obviously struggled to get into the SW, uh, SWPL last season with Rossville, they obviously lost a playoff to Stirling Uni. But in the championship so far, they've had a tremendous start. Ten games in, they've won ten out of ten. They are sitting comfortable. They're six points clear of Inverness and eight points clear of United in that division. And it just shows you that kind of the opposite of Garkale in this regard. Rossville have used that as fuel and look very solid in that league. Yeah, no, definitely. You've you've um, hit the nail on the head there. Definitely, they've they've went the opposite. They thought, you know, we don't want to rely on a playoff, you know, to get into to the league. We just want to be able to go and be the, the outright winners and and not have to take that gamble at the end of the season. Um, definitely the only team, you know, that that's still got hundred percent record. Um, every week, you know, getting results. Um, and it is only a six point gap, but but again, that is massive. You know, it's absolutely huge. You know, you've got that cushion. 
Um, if you just keep at, at that point when you've got that gap, you just go out and just think every week we just need to go out our business. We don't need to worry about any other teams, any other results. We just need to keep grinding at our results. Um, and hopefully by the end of the season that that will be us. And as I say, they'll avoid the the playoffs if they keep playing the way they are this season. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to get your thoughts on your your old side for uh, for for Farmington. They're sitting in a really good position at the top of League One. Twenty two points for eight games. I think there are only three. There's only three unbeaten teams in the the kind of whole women's division across the four leagues. It's Rangers, Rossville, and four for Farmington. How good is it to see them starting as well as they have? Oh, absolutely fantastic. Delighted for everybody involved with, with Forfa. Um, it was obviously so sad when, you know, what happened when they had to kind of fold. But, you know, there was conversations that were had around about that time and it was just to rebuild, you know, to, to start from scratch again and rebuild. And, and it's kind of similar to how they started. You know, they just went away about their business quietly and then slowly crept up the leagues. And, and I don't have any, any doubt at all that they will be able to, you know, keep climbing because they've got some a, a great structure up there, great facilities, um, and some great great players behind the scenes. Sorry, great people behind the scenes, um, that are, that are putting the time and effort into the club, um, and pushing it forward. So it's it's fantastic to see that. You know, you want clubs like Forfar who are a bit further out of the way. You want them. Yeah. You know, maybe a nightmare when you're a Glasgow or Edinburgh based club and you've got to travel up there or whatever. But you know, just in terms of having such a, a wide kind of net where there's players, you know, from Aberdeen, Dundee that that have these different options. Um, it's just fantastic to see, and and for me, it's just a, it's brilliant to see them doing so well. I'm I'm really happy for them. Yeah, absolutely. As obviously they they sat four points there, Edinburgh, Caledonia in second, Falkirk, St Marin, Stenhouse, and Queen of South Airdrie. They're all in uh, fourteen and twelve points. So again, as a tight league, I think well, obviously one go up automatically in second going to a playoff. I'm pretty sure, but I think that's something we can obviously address later on in the season. But it shows you across the kind of leagues there are some really kind of it's it's already shaping up to be a very competitive season. Across the four leagues. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like you pointed, I think it's Stenhouse, um, Queen of South Airdrie, and there's a lot. <laughs> they've all won um, 12 points each. I think yeah. Stenhouse and Muir have got a couple of games in hand as well. So I think for me, you know, it's it's quite exciting to see that, you know, will they win the, the games in hand? Will they, they go further up? Um, but it is, it's just, for me, I feel that there's such a progression in all the leagues. I feel that there's so many more teams and when you see that, that there's not one or two, two teams that are totally running away, you know, with, with the title, it's fantastic to see because it just shows that, that you know, in terms of the you know, the competitiveness, in terms of um, the way that the kind of league structured, the, in terms of the time that people are putting in, um, and just in terms of the numbers, how many players are getting involved. You know, for me, who's, you know, no longer playing, but being involved in, in yeah. women's game for such a long period of time, it's fantastic to see. Um, and you can start to see the work that all these people behind the scenes are putting in, that it's actually start coming to fruition. And you can actually see, you know, that that the league, the leagues, all the leagues are getting stronger. Yeah, they absolutely are. And it's, obviously, it's going to be something we're going to kind of keep an eye on over the season. We'll be kind of doing this on a regular basis, looking at the results over the the week, but I want to get your thoughts on something that's kind of come up in the past couple of days. It is, of, of course, we're seeing, I don't know if you saw, it, it was a brilliant article in the, the Press and Journal by a, a lady, Sophie Goodwin, who wrote a really good uh, investigative piece about the, the ACL injury blight. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's something I wanted to get your thoughts on because like, we've, we've seen in the past kind of few months, like Caroline Weir picks up a really bad one, Leah Williamson, I think there's some, been something like 20 uh, players in the WSL down in England that have been injured between like, the start of the season and now with an ACL injury. It's, it is a concern. It's something that obviously has been addressed kind of, in things like this, but we are seeing now it's coming up more and more. Like, what, what's, what's kind of your thoughts on it? How, like, in the past year, it's kind of, it seemed to kind of dominate like, injuries and with particularly women's players. Like, what's your kind of thoughts on it overall? I think that the reason why it's probably more spoke about now is because women's football has got a higher profile. Yeah. And when you have got players like Leah Williamson who lifted the Euros and, you know, there was talk of her possibly lifting the World Cup and then for her to lose out on that opportunity through an ACL injury. And then you've obviously got Beth Mead who was top goal scorer player of the tournament in the Euros and she was out in Miedema at Arsenal. You know, that's three Arsenal players and you start to kind of wonder what is going on. And as I say, because of the profile of the women's game, that's why it's, you know, more publicised now, um, which is which is fantastic because more research will be put into it. Yeah. These are professional clubs now that they're having to pay these players who aren't able, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, um, they're paying these players who aren't able to go on the pitch and perform for them. So they're wanting to prevent that as much as possible. 
Um, and, I, and I think that's, a, you know, it's a good thing. There's going to be much more research in it. There's going to be kind of probably more injury prevention, um, which is, is of, of course, it's the most important thing is for the health of the players. Um, for me, there's, you know, there's many factors in it. I feel that, um, you know, I've played alongside players before who have had two or three operations or, or you know, two or three bad injuries. Um, and, you know, one instance, it was down to, or put down to hormones. And, and that particular player wasn't allowed to, to play when it was her time of the month because yeah. her body reacted differently. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it, so she would be, I, I can't play this weekend, you know, and it's, you think, well, you know, it, it's a bit crazy when you think of it yeah. like that. Um, but then on the other hand, you know, people are talking about possibly football boots can be a big influence because they're geared towards men. You know, they're, they're obviously tested on men and they're structured around the, the shape of a man's foot, which is um, also as well, you know, women's hips are, are, are kind of wider naturally and their, their toes are pointed slightly further out. So then the power's not going right through their knees. It's kind of more at an angle and mm -hmm. possibly that's where the injury is coming from. There's so many different factors. Um, could it be that, you know, there's a lot more training, there's, the, you know, the, the physical aspect on the body. Um, but as you say, that teams like Chelsea, Arsenal, you know, the amount of staff that they've got, they'll look into this and they'll know exactly how much workload each player should have. So you're thinking, how can this be happening all these Arsenal players when they've got so much staff that look into this, sports scientists, the doctors. Um, and, and you wonder, you know, and, and that's the thing, it's just one of these things that you might never get down to the bottom of why it's happening. You might be able to prevent it in some cases, but every case is different. It could just be unlucky the way that you turned on that certain patch of grass that game or, you know, you, the, the boots that you were wearing that day. You know, I, I think it is one of these things that there's so much research that needs to be put into it. Um, and uh, as I said, we might never get to the bottom of it, but I think that we're possibly the women's game. It's possibly in the best position now that there might be something done about it, and hopefully in the future it can be prevented. Because from a Scotland perspective, you know we've got Caroline Weir out, um, and also as well Emma Watson, promising yeah. young player, went down to, to Manchester United. I was so excited to to see her journey and see you know what she was going to do down there, and then for her to kind of miss out as well. And it was just a training, you know, she'd done it in a training session, and you think it's not even a competitive game, just for it to happen in a, in a training session. Um, it's really sad for her, really disappointing for, for Scotland. Um, so for me, as I say, it's just, it's one of these things where it has been happening for years, but I think it is just at the forefront now because of the, the publicity and, and hopefully there will be more done in the future in, in terms of kind of injury prevention and, and other ways, whether it's football boots, whether it's, you know, managing the workload or whether it's different types of training and, and things like that. Um, but yeah, just one of these things. I'm fortunate that I've never experienced it myself, but having lots of players around you. And I think as well, when you're not a professional, you're having to wait a year for an operation and yeah, exactly. waiting months for a scan. It's it, it's really sad to see. I've seen players where they, they've had to go private themselves because you know the club can't afford it for them or, or aren't willing to do it. So um, it's one of the things that it, it does it does affect a lot of players, and you can't go to work as well, you know. And it, you know, it's, so it's not just your football life; it's your your whole life. That it does affect. Um, so hopefully there will be more done, and hopefully in the future we will see that that there will be change in, in that area definitely. No, absolutely. I think that's perfectly well said, and it's something that obviously I think with the kind of advance in technology and the advance of the the kind of women's football and and as a whole, like I remember ten years ago, that like, I'd never heard an ACL. Like I'd honestly never heard of it. Like it's it's one of those like I think the first player I remember it happening to was Stephen Naismith. Honestly, mm -hmm. that's the first time I remember hearing ACL, and that was what two thousand and ten. So it's it's in a, something that's obviously came like it's it's obviously been an injury that's been involved for a long, long time. But just with the kind of advance in technology, the progression, and kind of uh, like sports science and things like that, and the women's game obviously getting the profile it's getting, we are seeing it happen a lot more often. But as you say, like it is like Arsenal. I think a lot of people were thinking. I think Arsenal are like they've got the best side in the league, but because of the injury, I think like that, four or five or something like yeah. that at the moment. It's crazy, yeah. you know, that amount within one squad. Yeah, and it's it's well as well. And Caroline, we have been the perfect example. Like went to Real Madrid. I mean, probably the standout player in Scotland, kind of Scottish football at the moment, and she she does her ACL very early in her in her time at Real Madrid. So. Again, it's just it's something we hope that that can obviously like better treatment, better technology can can kind of get these players back quicker. So yeah, no, but brilliant piece, be so good when you've covered that really well, Suzanne. But we're going to move on to a bit of fun. We'll do this in every show. We do the the SWPL predictor. We're going to do the six games this weekend. I'm going to get you to give me a correct score in them, and we'll kind of have a wee competition against each other. 
Right, that's, right, that's good. That's it. Let's right. start with the, the game in BBC Scotland at 12 o'clock on Sunday. Celtic coast Aberdeen. I think it'll be a routine one for Celtic. Uh, I'm going to go 4-0 to Celtic, would you think? Same scoreline, but different. Well, same different. 5-1, I've put. 5-1. Um, I feel that Aberdeen, you know, they have got good players within their squad and, you know, Bailey Hutchison's pace. Um, that's why I feel they might sneak a wee goal, but I, I can't see past Celtic, you know, buying in a few against them. So 5-1 for me. Yeah, I think, I think you're right there. Hearts versus Hamilton. I'll go start with you, would you think? Hearts versus Hamilton. 3-0. Uh, 3-0 Hearts. Um, yeah, Hamilton, they don't look much a threat, so I think that Hearts, it will just be convincing for them back in, back in winning ways for them. Yeah, I'm going to go for 4 Four 0 again. I think Hearts will. I think Hearts will be in it. They'll be a wee bit. Uh, they'll be snapping blood after the the defeat against the yeah. uh, Hibs at Easter Road. So I think they'll be fancying their chances to to get a few goals in the board. The D United versus Glasgow City. Obviously, Glasgow City playing Wednesday night as well. So they obviously will have uh, two games in the space of three days. Which end they go to? Uh, they go to D United. What's your thoughts? Uh, I've wrote down two scores here, so I'll tell you the reason behind them. So the first one that I wrote was 2-2. Okay. The reason why is because Glasgow City have got the game midweek. It's away to Dundee. And I feel that Dundee are a threat, especially if they set pieces, you know, they've got some experienced players. Um, so, But then I kind of thought, uh, you know, you just can never see by Glasgow City. And, and then I wrote 3-2 to Glasgow City. Uh, so I'm kind of torn. I do think that there'll be quite a few goals in the game. Um, I do really hope that, that Glasgow City get the win and back to winning ways. Um, but for me, I think that'll be a really tight one. So I'll go 3-2. Three 3-2 two, three two three two City. City. I, yep. think, I think both teams will score. I think the United will fancy, fancy themselves. I'm going to go for 3-1 Glasgow City. I think Glasgow City will bounce back pretty well. Probably the tightest game of the weekend, I would say, is Motherwell versus Partick Thistle. Again, Partick Thistle in the crest of a wave. Motherwell will be hoping to get a win on the board. I think that's a tough game to call. Yeah, um, I've put down um, 2-1 to Partick Thistle. Okay. Um, Partick Thistle, just such a, a, a great start to the season. I think that they, they will get the win. Um, but again, I think it will be really tight. And Motherwell have got goals in, in their side, so that's why I've said 2-1. I'm going to go for 2-2. Two, two. I think it'll be a draw. I think it's quite hard to, to split. I think it'll be a really exciting game. I think both sides will go up for it. I think 2-2 two, two is... Uh, I think that, that could be a draw. It could be an even... It could be a Desmond, as we call it. Rangers versus Montrose... I think I can't see anything other than a comfortable Rangers win. I think six now Rangers. Seven now I've put down for that Seven one. Seven now. Um, I think that you know I was just thinking there about the the players that Rangers have got in their squad, and then I actually remember seeing on social media the other day that that Jean Ross is back in the training pitch as well. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'll reach out to her. I don't know how far away she is from actually playing. But you know, if if we're talking her coming into the side as well, we you know Roe Hardy. How it, it's, it, it could be really frightening right. when you look at that lineup because yeah, Jane Ross is a fantastic player. She, for me, she helped, you know, was one of the probably the most influential players when they won the league. Yeah. Um, so to get her back, I think that could be a, an extra incentive for them, you know, pushing for the title again this year. Yeah, absolutely. I think it could be a kind of big call for them. Uh, final game Spartans versus Hibs. That's going to be live on BBC Albert uh, 10 past four on Sunday. Again, another tight game. I do fancy Hibs, though. I think Hibs will win. 3-1. Um, I've put 3-0 Hibs for that one. Um, I feel that after that, you know, Edinburgh Derby win for uh, against Hearts for, for Hibs, I feel that they'll be on a bit of a high um, and, and Spartans at, at the moment. They'll just, you know, just get, you know, not getting the results that, that they kind of feel that they deserve. So um, within the squad, the spirit might not really be that high. So I feel that Hibs, if they turn up, you know, the Hibs that would know um, can turn up, I think that'll be quite comfortable 3-0 you know, for them. Yeah, I think it could be. Well, we went for, I we went for this kind of same score line apart for the kind of same same results apart for the Mill Party Thistle game. So, I will probably be kind of close in terms of, but the the results will, will be different. But we'll have that up over the weekend, and it's kind of something to keep an eye on. But for the the next show, so it's going to be very interesting to see how those go. But well, I it's been a, a fascinating show to cover. The the least the after that, it's the tenth of December before the the kind of league returns. So. That'll be fascinating as always. And that'll do us for this week's episode. As always, I want to thank my, my co-host, Suzanne. It's always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Brilliant. It's a great channel. All things football game with you. Brilliant, absolutely. Thank you very much, everyone, tuned in. Please follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube and podcast channels. Thanks, guys. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Cheers.